they say on average, anybody taking that CCNA exam for the first time, they're gonna fail it 50% of the time. And I know as a beginner, when I first started out, it took me at least a good six to eight times over the course of two years just to get that certification. So I know as a beginner, when you first start out, all of that stuff can look like Japanese when you're just, just starting out fresh and you're just a beginner and you don't know anything, have no kind of IT background or any kind of IT experience. But just like how I was, I had no IT experience and everything, but I know if I could pass that exam, I know that anybody can pass that exam. And just like I tell anybody that's starting out or any of my friends that may be interested in getting that exam, I just tell them that at the end of the day, this is not rocket science, what, what I'm doing, right? As a network admin or as a network engineer, none of this is rocket science. What I had to learn though, and what I had to understand is that CCNA and that exam, it's a whole game that they playing, right? And since it's a game, you're gonna to have to have a strategy. You're gonna to have to have some kind of game plan when you're going in there. So if you've been struggling, maybe you have even been failing to pass the CCNA or just running into roadblocks when you're studying, then this is why I created this video. It's gonna be for you. Because until I learned that I needed to develop the skill of studying, once I got that and once I developed that kind of formula to understand that they just playing a game with me, that's when it was game over, right? Cause now it was like, okay, now I got a strategy since y'all wanna play a game with me, I'm finna play the game and I'm gonna I'm a finesse it to my advantage, right? So in this video, I'm gonna be given the three most common mistakes that I find the majority of people are making when they're studying uh, and the mistakes, same mistakes that I made when I was studying to help you avoid them so that you could hopefully when you go to take the exam, it just makes it just a smooth and a pleasurable process for you. And if you're digging this kind of content, make sure to thumbs up the video. Definitely subscribe to the channel because I'm dropping videos like this on you every week. And also share the video to anybody that you might think might be interested. All right, we're going to start with pitfall number one, and that's overstudying or just trying to do too much. So when you go to study for a session or whatever, if you block out time to study, make sure you're not studying like a whole bunch in one session, right? Because again, the whole point of this game is you're trying to actually learn the information, right? Obviously you wanna pass the exam, but to be able to pass the exam, they're really testing your knowledge. So they're gonna be throwing a whole bunch of trick questions and stuff like that at you. So there's things that you can do to overcome that, like taking your practice test so that you can get in the rhythm of answering them questions. But when you go to sit down and study, make sure that you're not overstudying or just taking in a whole bunch of information. Make sure that you're breaking up those study sessions. If you're studying for an hour, make sure that you take a break. And if you go through a lab or if you're going through theory and you're trying to understand the topic, make sure that you're, you know, you could use that Pomodoro technique where you're stopping every 15 minutes and then breaking that hour up. Just don't try to overindulge because it is a lot of information coming at you, especially if you're a beginner. Because again, all of it looks like Japanese. So if you break it down into small digestible topics and time frames that way that you can start to get the hang of it just like when you learn to walk or learn to do anything you didn't just off top just start get up and just walk and everything like that you had to crawl and then you know you had to start taking little baby steps and all of that or whatever the case may be you get what i'm trying to say is you don't want to just rush into this kind of stuff and just hurry up and try to get the information you want to pull out the relevant information. You want to make sure that you're taking the time to really digest the information and making sure that you're consuming it in a um, manageable kind of way. So that's the very first mistake that people make. They try to just do too much in one study session. They're trying to do subnetting. They're trying to learn routing protocols. They're trying to learn the routing table. Break those things up. Learn just strictly subnetting in just one session if that's what you're going to learn for that hour of that day if that's all that you can get is just that one hour just in that session just make sure that you focus only on subnetting 
and that you break it up to where it's not overwhelming you. All right, number two, the second thing is, is just lack of direction. So the second mistake is just when you have a lack of direction, what I mean by that is your brain, it craves a pattern. That's what makes things easy for it, right? It is trying to always look for a pattern. Um, when you're learning how to drive or when you're learning any kind of new skill, that's what your brain is trying to do, is just trying to predict what the pattern is going to be. That way, it just makes it that much more easier and it moves you more towards pleasure and away from that pain of having that stress of trying to figure something out. So if you're doing any kind of skill that you're trying to learn, the brain is looking for a pattern. So what you can do for this is just throughout the day, constantly remind yourself of that study session that you may have. If it was subnetting, whatever you learned in that session, if there was one thing that you learned in that session, make sure that you just reinforce that throughout the day. Just make sure that you're telling your brain, hey, uh, what did we study today? We studied subnetting. Do whatever you got to do to write it down. If it's the more frequently that you're doing it, that you're recalling the information, that's the way that it's going to become more memorable to you. Don't just sit there, study in one session, and then throw the whole book away and go get on the game or go hang out with your people or whatever and just forget about it and then try to study again the next day. No, throughout the whole day, the more frequently you do it, that's what's going to put you on that vibe, right? That's what they say. The more frequent that you do something, that's your frequency. That's going to be the vibe that you're going to be in. You're going to just be eating, sleeping, living, breathing that material. And that's what you want to do. And just make sure that you're sacrificing that time for a reason and that you're putting that effort into constantly remind it to where your brain is just locking it in to where you're programming that brain, right? It's just getting locked into your subconscious. That way that you're going to be able to recall this information when you need it relevant for you when it's on the test or for however long you want it relevant for you. If you want it longevity with it, right? You just want to make sure that you lock it in the same way that you had to do anything like in school. If you had a big test coming up or whatever, when you were learning math or when you were learning how to read, whatever the case may be, you had to constantly read books. You couldn't just read one book and think you knew how to read. You had to sit there and read all of these books. You may not have known that's what they were doing in elementary school, but that's what they were doing. They were just programming that mind so that you can develop that skill of reading or that skill in math. So that's just the second thing. Make sure that you're providing direction for your brain because that's what your brain wants. It's like, okay, this cat want to know about computer networking. He wants to know about passing this certification. So you need to just saturate your brain with all of that kind of information constantly throughout the day, not just one time a day. I'm not saying that you got to study for hours on end, but you do have to constantly remind yourself and your brain about what you did study, what kind of information you did retain, whatever that may have been in your study session that day. Make sure that you're reviewing it frequently throughout the day, throughout the week, until it just becomes habit and you just form a habit of just recalling that information. That's the way it's going to stick. And I still use this technique even to this day. Like right now, I'm studying for the Security Plus. So when I need to recall information, when I'm trying to learn about a cross-site forgery attack or whatever that is, I got to sit there and remind myself all of the things that are involved in that attack because I'm not used to doing penetration testing and knowing all of the attacks and knowing all of the threats. So I got to know the difference between a server-side forge forgery and a cross-site request forgery, sorry, and a server-side request forgery, right? There's two differences between that. And I got to constantly remind myself throughout the day what I learned about each one of those, even if it's just a little bit. Finally, the third and last thing is what I would say is just don't get lost in the sauce. These topics is, as a beginner, they're going to be super complex for you. There's a lot of complex topics. Labbing is tough because if you never lab before, you're going to have to get used to that skill of building out a lab, um, troubleshooting the routing protocols and understanding how the traffic is flowing um, and just looking at the different layers of the OSI model and how they apply to the lab and what you're trying to learn and everything like that. So just don't get lost in the sauce. Again, what you want to do is just, just 
focus on getting a little bit better each and every day. You don't want to just think that you're just going to wake up and just talk like that, right? You, you're really not like that as a beginner. As a beginner with anything, it doesn't matter if we're talking about computer networking, if we're talking about playing basketball, if we're talking about any kind of skill that you want to develop. Nobody started out at the top. They were never just off top the greatest or whatever. They had to work at it. And you could just add a little bit to your bag each and every day. Like, okay, I got OSPF down. Now I know how neighborships are formed or whatever. I know how to troubleshoot that. Or I got just subnetting down. Just focus on getting a little bit better every day. Just that 1% better or whatever. And over time, you know, that compound interest effect takes effect, right? Where you just develop the skill before you know it, you over there, you doing it with your eyes closed. And you know, just like even if you're working a job, you don't understand the job right away. But you look at yourself from the first time you started the job till six months into the job. Now you, you just doing it with your eyes closed. You, you don't, you just, you could just do it without even thinking about it any kind of skill, driving, whatever the case may be. So don't get lost in the sauce because it's very easy with all these complex topics, all this new terminology that you're learning. You could definitely just get lost in it and then that's going to frustrate you. And that frustration is going to show up when you go sit that exam because you done frustrated yourself so much when you were studying, when you're supposed to be making it easier for you. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. All I want to do is just say to just let this video be a reminder to you if you're going through it right now, just make sure that you understand that you are not going to be the expert right at the beginning. You got to crawl before you walk. You heard it all before. I'm just trying to say it a different way. You're not going to be that expert when you first start out. But always remember, you definitely are going to reap what you sow. So make sure that you're putting in that work because when it's time for you to get the benefits from it, it's going to show up, especially on that exam day. If you've been putting in that work and just getting a little bit better each and every day, then it's going to show up. So just do those things. Just make sure that you staying on top of your study and make sure that you practice it. Try to teach it to somebody. That's the best way to do it, right? That's the best way to lock it in because once you teach it to somebody, that's how you know you really learned it because you're going to have to be able to explain it to somebody, just like anything, right? Any kind of skill. If you can explain it to somebody, if you have kids and you got to help them with a math problem and you're trying to help them with two plus two and you got to sit there and break it down to them, it's the same kind of concept. If you got to explain subnetting to somebody, you got to be able to make it plain for them. And you're not going to be able to do that as a beginner just off top. You're going to have to work at that. So just focus on just improving just a little bit each and every day. If you don't take nothing else from me on this video, just take that from me that you're just trying to. Hopefully all that made sense. If it did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Definitely thumbs up the video and share the video if you was feeling the content, digging the content. And I'm going to catch y'all on that next video. Holla at me. Peace.